Good morning, everyone. This is Brother Dial from Fleming Island, Florida. I want to greet you today on this Resurrection Day. Uh, and it is a great day because Jesus said, I will rise. He said, you destroy this body, this temple, in three days, I'll raise it up. And he proved his word to be the truth. And, uh, of course, he proved it that day. But that wasn't the only resurrection. There was to be another resurrection. And so, that's what we want to look to today. We know that was a great thing. And that hadn't happened to, to pay the price, to set us free because he was the only one that could have done it. God became a man. It was God's own blood that paid the price on Calvary. So it was a man, and it was God in the man, and it was God's light in the blood that actually paid the price. So what a great thing is now when we accept that we're free there's nothing held against us but one thing about it you have to accept that it's not just something to know about it uh, and of course the world tries to cover it over today with everything else with religion and church entity and everything else and then everything else they do on Easter to to take away from it but it still <clears throat> remains that you have to accept Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're glad today, and we count it a real joy to be part of His resurrection. So uh, He went down uh, as one man. He came up as one man, but He promised that He would come back again. And Thank God that he has, and we're a part of it today. So let's open up <clears throat> with a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you today. Lord, what a great thing it is. Never had a man died that, say, that could say that I have power to lay my life down and I have power to take it up again. I've been many many good men that had died for good causes and everything else but never a man that had died and could come back to life again and prove it to be so but lord you were that special one you were the god man the one the only one that could pay your own price lord the thing that you had set for and Lord, you've done it. you become a man to pay the price. And Lord, we give you praise and honor and glory this day because we have received that life, that life that came back, Lord. We have received it. It's done something for us, and we so appreciate it, Lord. So today we give you praise, honor, and glory, and we thank you for the resurrection, the resurrection to be a new creature, to be born again. Old things pass away. All sins are not only forgiven, but they've been justified. And we thank you for that. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. So today, <clears throat> since it is <clears throat> Resurrection Day, which <clears throat> no doubt everybody's uh, got this on their mind. I thought I would take a little subject about the resurrection. And I want to call this, to give it a title, I want to call it uh, The Resurrection This Day. And as we go into the message, I hope you'll see kind of what we're, we're talking about. What a great thing that was 2,000 years ago. But what a, what a great thing it is this day when we can uh, recognize that, that we're part of that resurrection. And as, as 
has like a, I guess you could call it a subtitle. I want to say, I'll rise again. And that's Jesus. He said, I'll rise again. And I got a, a couple of scriptures I want to uh, get to here. And uh, I think I'll go ahead and read the scriptures. And I'm going to touch on another thing. And then we'll go on into the message. But to read the scriptures, this is Jesus. And he's talking uh, <clears throat> to some of the Pharisees and so on. And this is in Matthew 22, 31. And of course, they've always questioning him. And they, they always will seem like they never can. But usually, the person asking the question thinks they know the answer. And by asking the question, they kind of control uh, the subject and so on. So no doubt they were doing that in that day. So anyway, they were asking about the man and, and the brothers, and, and they all had the same wife, and they asked this question. But the question was about the resurrection. And so that's what the question is about today, about the resurrection. So let's pick it up here in Matthew 22, 31. And we want to read just a couple more scriptures with that. And this is Jesus. He said, but as touching the resurrection of the dead, have you not read that which was spoken unto you by God, saying, and you know where he's, he's getting this from now. He's getting going right back into the scriptures that he knew if they knew anything, they should know this. And of course, he's going back to Exodus 3 and 6, where when Moses went to the, to the burning bush, it, that bush spoke out and told him something. And this is just about what it said. I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but the living. Well, my goodness. And listen, and when the multitude heard this, they were astonished at his doctrine. And let me say this, they are still astonished at his doctrine. Because evidently they had never heard anything like this from the priest and so on. But look here, this is, is the God that was speaking to Moses. That God now was veiled in a man and speaking to them again, but they did not know that. Now I want you to notice, he said, now, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Well, and they were thinking, well, they're all dead. Well, we, we've got their, their graves, their secularists and everything over here. We know they're dead. And here he is telling us that they're alive. And, and, that, and there was no way that they could even in their minds fathom such a thing. And so no wonder they were astonished at his doctrine. Now, let's just think for a minute. He said, I am the God of the living, not the God of the dead. And so all of these, they were the Old Testament saints that died in faith well, you say, well, they died. But look here, they had representation. They were with him before the foundation of the world. The only thing that died was the outside. The real, genuine, true them was on the inside. 
And, the, and it was in a, in a book called the Lamb's Book of Life, which is eternal life. And I asked him the question, can eternal life die? Well, if you got eternal life, it didn't start yesterday, or it didn't start when you come down to the altar, or it didn't start when you accepted Christ here as a person. It, you, you've got a life that never did begin and never can end. So he's not the God of the dead. Which the people want him to be. But he's not. He said he's not. He is the God of the living. Now, let's go just a little bit further with this this resurrection, this day, because, because the resurrection has got to fit all the way down through. Now, Jesus, he comes and he's confronted with the resurrection over there in John 11. And you know the story about how Lazarus had died and they sent for him to come, but he said, no, I can't go. Because he said, Lazarus, and he finally told me, he said, Lazarus is dead. And so he comes up, and now he's on the scene, and Lazarus is dead, and been dead, four days, and he's in the grave, and he's, he's already, his body is deteriorating, and, and, and the scripture says he's stinking. Verse 23 of John 11. Jesus saith unto her, Thy Brother shall rise again. Yeah. Lazarus is dead. But remember, he's not the God of the dead. He is the God of the living. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Now, where do you reckon Martha got that from? Did she just pull that out of thin air? Or maybe had she been taught that in the synagogue that one day there's a, there's a, a resurrection coming and everybody that's... She had to get it from somewhere. No doubt that she had been taught that. Well... I'd say they were astonished at his doctrine, and no doubt she is going to be astonished too, because, and, and the people today, they are astonished at his doctrine, because they've got, they've got the resurrection and everything else out in the future somewhere. One day this is going to happen, and, and this, when the resurrection Let's, let's read and see what the resurrection is. And I know that he'll rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am. Not I will be. I am. Not I was. I am the resurrection and the life. And the life that he's got is not a natural life. It is eternal life. And he is the God of the living. Because the one that said that he was the God of the living is the one that is talking to her. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead. Uh-oh. And we'll get into this dead part. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he's done to her. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. Because, look here, Lazarus was believing in me. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Now look here. 
Believest thou this? Amen. Look here. Now, whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Well, that's, that's something besides natural life. Because natural life here is just a it's just a, a amount of a, a time slot. I don't care if it's if it's eighty years or hundred and twenty or like Noah then it's five hundred, six hundred. It's still a time slot. So he whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? So he's talking about eternal life. He's not talking about natural life. And to be have eternal life, you've got to be with him, always be a part of him. And most people, there's no way they they can't understand that, so they can't believe that. You try to tell them, look here. I was with Christ before the foundation of the world. He put my name in His book. I'm a part of Him. And He is eternal. And I am eternal. Not in this thing here that come by way of the sex birth. Eternal life. The real you. The real me. But everybody, they just they look to the outside. And that's what they've done with Jesus. They say, well, he's just a man. And then they say, oh, he's a man trying to make himself God. No, he was a God making himself a man so that he could pay the price. <clears throat> All right, so Jesus has told her, look here, you're talking about a resurrection way off in the future somewhere. Look here, I'm talking about I am that resurrection. And I'll prove to you that I am. And he did prove to him. He said, Lazarus, come forth. Loose him and turn him loose. And there was Lazarus up from the dead. He proved he was. He proved it when he said, destroy this body. Destroy this temple. In three days, I'll raise it up. And he did. <clears throat> now, let's look over to, because remember, He's not the God of the dead. Okay, let's see what Paul catches this over here in Ephesians 2. And let's just read uh, the first few verses out of Ephesians 2 and see what Paul is talking about here. Because we're talking about a resurrection this day. I'll rise again. And you hath he quickened. Quickened to be to means to be made alive. Well, if, if you if you've been made alive, you must have been dead to start with. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. Well, my goodness. How did I get that way? I was supposed to be born here and I was supposed to be alive. But he said you were dead in trespasses and sin because you were born in sin. And as far as, as God was, you were dead. But look here. There was something inside of you that could be quickened. Because you had representation from predestination. Your name was on the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world. But look here, because of what happened in the garden with Adam and Eve, look here, the sin passed on every man. But look here. Let's just read a little further here. He says, now, hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin, 
And that comes from that natural birth. Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Look here, prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Disobedience to what? What were they disobedience to in the beginning? They were disobedient, disobedient to the word that God had given them. They disobedience to the word, to Christ. Among whom also we had our conversation, we had our lifestyle in times past in the lust of the flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature. You were born in it. Brother Brown said you were trapped into it. You couldn't help it because that's the way you had to come. But look here. You don't have to stay trapped. There is a way out of the trap. What is the way out? It is the new birth. It is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And you were by nature the children of wrath. Even as others. But look here. Verse 4. But. B-U-T. But. God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherein he loved us. While ye, we were yet sinners, God loved us. And even when we were dead in sins, hath he quicken us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved and has raised us up together and made us to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus and has raised us up, has given us a resurrection from death unto life. And I'm not talking about a natural life. I'm talking about you having eternal life. But everybody is like Martha. They're, they're well, one day. Well, in the last day, well, my goodness. How many last days have there been? If you look here, if you went, if you lived to be 80 years old and you went to 80 and that was it, that's your last day. But no, people today, religion has so, the religion has so mixed and hybrid God's word with man's theology and thoughts and traditions and everything else that the people don't even know what a resurrection is. The people of the world think the, resurre the resurrection is a bunch of rabbits hopping around and a, and a chicken laying eggs. That's how bad everything is. Could you imagine Christ's church letting out so they can go hunt eggs on the ground and everybody advertising, come here Easter Sunday because we're going to have an egg hunt? Paganism to the core. No, they love that. Sure they love it. Because it's the world. They love the world. And the things of the world. But Jesus said, if you love that, the love of God's not even in you. But you can't tell them nothing. Because why? They're dead. He's not their God. <clears throat> so, Resurrection this day, I'll rise again. Well, I got news. He has. He has. He has. Now, I had put something <clears throat> on.
Facebook the other day. Somebody had put a scripture, and when they did, man, it just, something just went off in my head. I said, man. And I put this. I said, the opening of the seven seals shook all. The opening of the seven seals shook all. And so if there's an opening, there has to be an opener. It isn't going say, Phew. no. There's an opening and there's an opener. And it shook everything. And there was three, I wrote down three things that got shook. Okay. <clears throat> the seven seals some got shook up. What are you talking about? What do you mean seven seals? Some got shook up. Some got shook off. And some, the, look here, the virgin got shook awake because that was supposed to happen when he come. And, it, and she did. And not only her, but it said, the, the, the wise, they woke up and they said, give us some of your oil. I said, look here, you have to go get your own. So yes, it was a great shaking. And of course, as always, God does something. <clears throat> and the world knows nothing about it. So, anyway. Now, if you, if you look at the news at all, I mean, you couldn't have missed this. They had a, they had a big fire at the Notre Dame Cathedral. And I, I mean, it was on just for day after day, they showed the, the films of the fire just raging and, and, and it had burning down and people running in there and, and trying to get, trying to get, their, their relics out of there. Oh, they said they had, the, they had the very crown of thorns that was on Jesus' head. And they had this and they had that. No doubt they had some of the nails and a piece of the cross and everything else and people running in there and pulling all that stuff out. And they was both, and then somebody said, well, we even saw the image of Jesus in there. I guarantee you, you didn't see him in there. <clears throat> but see, people, that's how much they think of their relics. They think there's some kind of a power in some old relic somewhere. Yeah. They thought that then, and they think it now. And they, they, they have that, what they call the shroud of touring, touring all around. It was supposed to be what Jesus was wrapped in. I doubt it very, very much. But, but this, think about this. If it was, it wouldn't do you a bit of good. It's not to know about these things, it's to know Him. And I was thinking about this, and I remembered... And Brother Branham made a comment about this. And it's in the restoration of the bride tree there in Jeffersonville, 1962. <clears throat> well, you know, there's 19 different nails in the nation today that different organizations are holding and could claim it's the original nail that was in his hands. What of it? If it was. What of it? If it was. I wouldn't want nothing to do with it. Certainly. God never left anything for relics and tokens. Whoa, my goodness. He sent the Holy Ghost something alive 
that cannot be destroyed. That's why they were taking these things out of the Notre Dame because that fire was going to consume everything. What would a nail do me any good? What would the original cross he hung on? What would it do me any good? Not a bit. And people say, oh my. This, this relic, it's not, it wouldn't do you a bit of good. Not a bit. It's not, listen, it's not to know the nail, to know the cross, but to know Him is life. God is the God of the living. To know Him, not to know the cross, the nail, the, the, some relic somebody's picked up along the way. It's to know Him. In Him is life. Now, so we're holding on to nails and we're holding on to relics and we're holding on to places. And everybody thinks, well, if I can go to Jerusalem, I'll get closer to God. I'll go over there and walk where He walked. Look here. You know how you get closer to God? You go in your closet and you pray. And you feel His presence. And you commune with Him. You talk to Him and He talks back. You don't have to go on a thousands of mile trip somewhere. Some people today think, well, if I could just go to Arizona, I could get closer. You don't have to go to Arizona. You don't have to go to Jerusalem. But that's what they think. And so we're holding on to places. And today, and I guarantee you, this whole weekend over there, it, you're talking about a, a celebration and something going on. And today people walk up and down in the city of Jerusalem. And all up and down in different places. And holding to relics and things. And that ain't got nothing to do with it. Not a thing. The thing's condemned, rotten, and gone on. It's not about that. It's about Christ and you having a personal relationship with Him. You must be born again. Then you can see and understand the kingdom. The kingdom's not in Jerusalem and it's not in Arizona. It's in you. But oh no, that's too simple. They want something that they can do. The thing they need to do is accept Christ. And what He's done and what He said, you have to accept Him. And Him is the Word. He is the promised Word of the day and the hour that you live in Him. He's not the promised creed or some promised church something or something else. But that's what the people think He is. The promised Word. He promises it and He fulfills it. And that's His interpretation. And the people say, well, I don't know about that. What He does, He's the one that said it. And He's the one that said He would fulfill it. And God is His own interpreter. Now, talk still talking about relics. Ooh, Lord, there's a bunch of them. But you know, now these old relics are all objects that they so they so value and prize and so on. But you know what the worst relic to come out of such things as that? Denominationalism organization. You know what the worst relics are? The worst relic I know of is these old denominational relic of creeds and dogma and man-made doctors. Not one has any life or any way to bring life. 
And the people are holding on to all that stuff. Well, my church believes this, and my pastor said this, and this, and this, and this. And it come out of the dark age. Well, Luther said, and Wesley said, look here, that was their day. We're in another day. We're in another hour, another time. All their relics are nothing but death. God is not the God of the dead. But they think He is. They think, well, you know, He, he, died, he died in Christ. Look here. You don't die in Christ. You live in Christ. And you know, this is just a couple of those relics that come out of there. You know, they got Jesus lying down in a flesh body. That body of 2,000 years ago. Oh, he's going he's to fly down and he's going to stand up in there. There's pictures everywhere. My goodness, I just seen this video they put on the other day. Oh, it had him, he was coming out of the sky, riding a white horse and all the armies of heaven was following him. And he, boy, he was, he was taking over. Well, I've got news for you. He's already taken over his kingdom. And all of these things, they make everything. The whole book of Revelation becomes a whole literal thing when it's a book of symbols and it's spiritual. But no, the people, they, they love those, those fables and fairy tales. That's what they can kind of kind of get their mind with spiritual things they know nothing about because they're not spiritual people you have to be born again to get that and then they got flesh bodies popping up out of the grave well we're going to touch that in a minute and, and why would you want that thing it was born in sin to begin with that's what caused the death to start with disobedience, going their own way. And then they got, oh, they got this, this wedding supper up in the, in, in the sky, in the air somewhere. Well, I, I, I asked somebody, I said, if you got a wedding supper, what are you going to eat? Somebody, give me a clue. Look here. The supper is down here. It's, we got a seven-course meal. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ. You're feeding on the unfailing body word of the Son of Man. But oh, no, no, no. All I can say is, thank God for the opening of the seven seals when God would come on the scene and he would take and wipe all of that relics from the past all those relic teachings from the past he would throw them in the trash and he said don't bring them over here burn them but what did they do they brought them right with them and they're carrying on. You can't tell, you can't tell a message hardly from a Pentecostal or a Baptist or a Methodist. Same old teaching, same thing. But if that's what they want, that's what they can have. Relics. Well, there's no life in the relic. There's only life in one thing, and that is Jesus Christ. And you must have that. Now, God hiding himself in simplicity, revealing himself in the same there in Jeffersonville, 1963. This is before the opening. Just as we was setting the stage to open the seven seals. And when they say the graves will open, how the graves are going to open, he said, now, I haven't got time to get into this. He said, what I wanted to, 
I'm going to have to take this. He said, just to show you the simplicity of God. And he said, I'm going to show you this, the simplicity of God. And that's what God is, simplicity. God hiding himself in simplicity. And when he does it, he's hid. They can never find him because they're looking for something else. And that calcium potash and everything when, everything when it's in you, all of the materials only makes a spoonful. That's right. And what that does, it breaks on back into spirit and life. It breaks on back into spirit and life. God just speaks and the rapture will come. Rapture. Caught up. God just speaks. And the rapture will come. It now. God just speaks and the rapture will come. It ain't. Be sure you get that. It ain't going out there. And angels come down and shovel out the graves. Well, that's what they told us. Well, that's a relic of the past. You need to come on up. You need to come and be a, and don't be like they were. Be astonished. Don't be astonished. Say, glory to God, I see it. But no. And angels come down and shovel out the graves and get an old dead carcass here. What is it? That thing is coming out of there. What is it? It's born of sin to begin with. Look here. Coming right all the way from Genesis. That thing. Look here. If, if you think that you're in the ground, God is not your God. Because we don't go into the ground. This thing goes in the ground. This is just a house that the real Glenn Dahl is living in. This thing is not going nowhere but where it come from, back to the dust. That's what the Bible said. But no, no. We're going to take this with us. Well, you keep on believing that. That's a relic out of the past. And there's no life in it. What is it? It's born of sin to begin with, but a new one made in its likeness. Look here. That's what the new birth does. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. You become a new creature. Old things pass away, and behold, all things become new. New creation. Born of God, not born of mom and papa. But no, they can't have that. They want to keep the old. Well, if that's what you want, you go ahead. You know, see, if we have this, okay, if we have this, we'll die again. I can prove it to you. Look here. He raised Lazarus, give him a natural resurrection. Is that right? And Lazarus had to die again. But the thing that was in Lazarus was that representation of predestination that couldn't die because that was his eternal part. Look here. Lazarus he couldn't have a 2 Corinthians 5, 17 because Jesus had not been crucified. He had not paid the price yet. People try to, you know, people try to, they take the Gospels 
And they try to, they just try to mush them all together with what was brought in the New Testament by Paul and the others. But it's two different times. Look here, they're back here working from the Old Testament. The law and everything else. And over here it's the New Testament, brand new, because the price has been paid. But no, they don't make any difference to them. They don't know no different. <clears throat> so if we have this, he said, we'll die again, see? Nobody can say the graves will open, the dead shall walk out. Nobody will say the graves will open and the dead shall walk out. Look here. That may be true, but not open the way you say open. The graves will open. Well, look here. This here is the grave that the seed of God was put into and one day you hath he quickened who were dead in sin and trespasses. Now you're a new creation. And you've walked out of that old thing. That old thing is the old man, the old has been done away with. The Holy Ghost and fire come in you and burnt that old nature out. And now you are nature of God. You're partakers of that divine nature. But oh, no, 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 we don't. Whew, Lord. You'd figure after all of these years and God bringing forth the truth of His Word by a vindicated prophet, William Branham, that, but no, look here. If you don't have eyes, to see and ears to hear it, you'll never see it. You'll never hear it. You'll never understand. But look here. It was sent for a purpose. Just as the water was sent in Noah's day. Why? Look here. The water saved some and condemned the rest. And this message, it'll either save you or condemn you. That's just as simple as it gets. But that may be true, but not open the way you say open. That's right. See, it won't be like that. It'll be a secret because he said he'd come like a thief in the night. And he did. And they didn't even know he was here. He come, fulfilled his word, left, and they're still. Well, one day in the last day, Jesus is going to come in the sky and they're going to blow the horn and we're all going to fly away. Huh. Yeah, that's a relic. That's a relic out of the past. That has already taken place. And we're here trying to tell what God has done. But it don't make any difference. It still has the same purpose. Now, so your natural birth brought you here in a grave and you were dead. That's why you needed to be quickened. And you wasn't quickened by jumping out of some grave somewhere. You were quickened by the Holy Ghost coming upon you and quicken you to new life. Amen. Now, this is something I was, was thinking about while I was going through this. And remember, the resurrection this day, I'll rise again. And just think about this. The first Adam, his wife, was in him. Is that right? And, and, and their name was called Adam. So the wife's name was Adam and the husband's name was Adam because they were one. And you can read that right in the, out of the Bible there in Genesis 5. Now, the second Adam, Jesus Christ, when his wife was in him, her name was Jesus. 
Is that right? Because he, the first Adam, he was the second Adam. So his wife, just as the first Adam's wife was in him, the second Adam, Jesus Christ, his wife was in him. And her name was Jesus. But when she was released, because you say, well, we were in Jesus. Yeah, he, if you were ever in him, because the Bible said he was the fullness of the Godhead bodily. When he walked on this earth, we walked with him because we were in him. So, our name was Jesus because we were with him. Now, but there had to be just as Eve come out of Adam, and then when she come out, she got her name. And it was Eve, the mother of all living. And when we were in Christ and we were released, we had a name, and it was called the church, his body. So now, when she was released from Jesus, she was known as the church. Now, coming down through all of these ages, there's, there's seven ages, and God's got seven messengers, and he's got, he's got people. Look here, we know he redeemed us at the cross. He paid the price, but he couldn't collect us all because we were not all there yet. We had to be manifested, come to the earth in flesh, receive our word for our day, and believe it, and have a new birth. All right, so the first age comes along. Paul goes out, Peter and all the rest of them, they go out, and they collect that, 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 that church. Okay, but look here. He can't marry. Just maybe we'll say, well, what, well, what was that? Was that the foot or what was it? He can't marry that. So it's got to go on through all the church, church ages. Building what? Building the body. Building the, the body of what? The body of Christ. The many-membered body. Not just one person. Many member, but it's, remember, it's one body, and it's about this resurrection. I'll rise again. Look here. The first one, he said, in three days, I'll bring it back. Well, this one was three days. But this days were a thousand year days. He said, in three days, and it was three days, and we're down here 3,000 years right at it. So, he's bringing it back. And that's the way he's bringing it back. All right, so every age is coming. Now, woo, we come right on down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there's only seven. And that goes to the church. These, he, when, he, when John wrote the book of Revelation, he said, these things happening in the church. <clears throat> all right so coming all the way back and look here down to the seventh age and he said the seventh age was completed the seventh age is over and it is because when Christ comes that finishes up the denominational and the church ages are over go back and read it for yourself and if you believe what he said but oh no, we run over here. Oh, we know. Well, yeah, as far as the world goes on, the seven church age is all they got. They'll never let it in. But anyway, so coming down through all those ages, picking up, building the body, building the body, building. He said the church had to go in the ground just like Jesus went in the ground, but she started to come out in the Reformation, coming up, feet, legs, waist, arms, right up, and then the head comes down and the body's complete. That is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, we are once again 
the body, the full body, the wife has now gone back into Christ. And her name is the same as his name. It's no longer the church. Brother Bram said, I'm no longer going to call you church. I'm going to call you bride. Well, the bride became the wife. The wife and the husband are not separated. They are one. And the name, when I got married, my wife took my name. I didn't take hers. She took mine. And when you marry Christ, when you go back into his body, his name is your name. But oh no, the people don't want that. And they're looking for, well, what, what is, what is the new name? Well, we'll get to that in a minute. There's only one name. There's not another name given other than the name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so, now, when she is united back with Jesus by the resurrection of his body through the seven church ages, her name is Jesus again. The new name is the same name. It's Jesus Christ. Hmm. And where do you say you get that from, okay? Ephesians 3, 14 and 15. For this cause... I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. If you're in Jesus Christ, your name is Jesus. That's about as simple as I know how to make it. Now, remember, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. Now, one more statement on this. And this was out of the little message in Chicago, 1963, called Once More. And listen to what he says. He just is preaching a regular, kind of what we call a regular message to the people there. And he just this in. And if the church can overcome, she will stop saying, I'm Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, when she can overcome her creeds, yeah, creeds, dogmas, and relics, if she can overcome those. And the world that's drawn her in there, she'll come back to be the bride of Jesus Christ, Mrs. Jesus Christ. Amen. A name. A name change. Look here. People say, oh, uh, 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 are you a Christian? Well, you know, uh, 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 yeah. If you're a Christian, you're Christ. Your name is Christ. Your name is Jesus Christ. You're, you've been pulled back into the body. You're no longer outside, you're inside. But no, it's too much. Yes, it's absolutely too much. Ah, but it's the truth anyway. But they'll give them something to work on and they'll give them something to talk about. And they'll give them something to, well, I think this and I think that. Well, go ahead and think. But he said, we ain't got no thing coming. Now, so Jesus Christ, he said, I am the resurrection and life. And when you have that, you have life, and he is your God. He is the God of the living, not of the dead. <clears throat> and when you get eternal life, you don't have to worry about no dead. Oh, well, they say, well, it's appointed to a man to once to die and then the judgment. That's the outside. That's not me. Brother Brown said we were judged in that body of Jesus Christ on the cross. But we know this thing is, he said, if our earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, we have a, we have a body eternal. But oh no, that's too much. 
Now, where are we at? Okay, now, this is in the rising of the sun. And I was thinking about that this morning. You know, they uh, on Easter, they go out and have the sunrise service. And they're watching the sunrise. Well, look here. I want you to know, what good would it do you if you go out and see the S-U-N rise? It rises every day. So what makes it so special on supposedly this day? It is the rising of the S-O-N of God. Him back on the scene again, fulfilling His Word, giving His interpretation, and everything that's supposed to happen, happen in this time. But the people, they don't care nothing about that. Some kind of tradi tradition. Well, they was going to see the sunrise when they was worshiping the sun god. How many hundreds of thousand years ago? Just another relic. It is the rising of the sun. Jeffersonville, 1965. Because I live, ye live also, speaking to his wife. That's not to the world, that's to his wife. Because I live, you live also. What a resurrection that was. Amen. That was a great thing 2,000 years ago. Never had anything like that happen. And what a resurrection this is. Now listen, what a resurrection this, this, this is to be quickened from the dead. You were dead in trespasses and sin, but now you have been quickened. You've been made alive, and he's a God of the living. Oh my. To made alive in Christ Jesus by God's quickening power. God's quickening power is the Holy Ghost. That's what quickened Jesus' body when he was in that grave and everything else. He was waved to them. The word which he was, was way back to them on the day of Pentecost. Okay, he was way back to them. What happened on the day of Pentecost? The Holy Ghost and fire coming that, and they became new creatures in Christ Jesus. They was born again. Old things passed away. They, they come out of there bold, brave, and wasn't afraid of nobody. Who boy, if people could get that today. He was waved to them and waved back to them on the day of Pentecost. The Word made flesh. And now, as I say, it's to be waved again in the last day. What's to be waved again? The same thing that was waved in that day. The Holy Ghost, the Word. The Holy Ghost brings a word. The Holy Ghost quickens a word. The Holy Ghost is the word. Oh, Lord. And the people, they just <laughs> traps around with some old relic from somewhere else. Telling the people, hey, you got to do this. You got to do that. Look here, you get Christ. And it won't be a God of you. You do it. And you'll be glad to do it. Now, I want to make a comment on this, this quote here. Now, remember, he said, what a resurrection that was and what a resurrection this is. And they're both of them the resurrection. The resurrection of who? Jesus Christ. 
If that resurrection back there, 2,000 with Jesus Christ resurrected in a body, that means this resurrection, this one here, is Jesus Christ resurrected in a body. The resurrection that was and is. Now look, remember, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. I am. Not I was or will be. I am. The resurrection that was and is. They, there are a resurrection, they, these resurrection, he's talking about two of them, was and is. They are the resurrection of the body of Jesus. The one body that was born of Mary and the one that came through the seven church ages as God was building his body. Glory, what a revelation to be his body on earth today. Fulfilling our word for our season. Hallelujah. Amen. Just to think of the religious world looking to the graveyard, carnal minded, deceived people. And that's what they're looking for. Looking to the graveyard. All right, I got some. Statements I'm going to run through here in the, the Easter seal. And this wasn't even in Jephthah, but this was out in Phoenix, Arizona. Talking to just a, a group of people out there. He usually really give the, the real deep stuff there in Jeffersonville. But he knew his time was running out. Easter seal, Phoenix, 1965. And now, what? is this Pentecostal blessing. What is the Pentecostal blessing? What did they get on the day of Pentecost? They got the Holy Ghost and fire. They got the new birth. It's the confirmation of the resurrection. That's what it is. The Pentecostal blessing is the confirmation of the resurrection. You were dead and now you're not dead any longer. You are alive. Paul talked about it and God showed it right there on the day of Pentecost. No wonder the gospel itself means good news. Good news of what? He has raised from the dead, and because I live, you live also. Ye which were once dead in sin and trespasses. Did we read it? God has quickened us together by the Spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead. And we are now sitting in heavenly places with Him, communing with Him, talking with Him. What a joy to tell people that story that believes it to be the truth. Amen. What a joy to tell that to people that believes it's the truth. But what does the world believe? Well, one, one day, uh, uh, one day, uh, there's, the, the graves are going to burst open. Huh. Still in this Easter seal. Now notice the very essence of this resurrection, not that one, this one, is to tell and to show and to prove that Jesus has raised up from the dead. He's not dead. He's a living. He lives here. He's in us. And they're looking for something. Well, they're looking for him in the sky. Well, my goodness, if he's here in us, what are we going to do the one that comes in the sky? He's in us. I'll be with you, even in you. A little while in the world seeth me no more. They will look for the world to see him. You could not show him to the world. The world don't even have eyes to see him with. 
The world seeth me no more. You think Jesus lied? That's what he said. That's what he meant. Yet ye shall see me, for I will be with you even in you unto the end of the world. Now, as Christians, we all claim he is alive, or we have been quickened, quickened from death to life by his spirit, if we have been quickened, then we've not been made alive. And if you've not been made alive, God is not your God. God is the God of the living. And then people claiming they're alive because they've got some old relic from the past that they're holding on to that don't have one little teeny bit of life in it. Just the opposite. Easter seal. So do we. When you receive the Holy Spirit of God, it's God's potential waiting upon you that, that that's already recognized you and you are sealed by the the spirit of promise of God into the body of Christ. When God looked down at Calvary and seen Jesus die, he not, oh, he died for his bride, the body, which is the, the word church, the church that believes the word of God for the age, whether it's feet, body, head, or whatever it is, see, it's Christ was bleeding and dying and looking down upon him, saw his resurrection and the church raised with him on Easter. Glory to God, and we've had head time. He's connected to the body. The body is complete. But you'll never get the world to believe that. I don't expect them to. I would be shocked if they did because they don't have anything to believe with. They're dead. <clears throat> Still in this Easter seal. You know what the Easter seal? He said it's an Easter seal. And when I was thinking about the Easter seal, I was thinking about the seventh seal. Because the Easter seal is a, is a resurrection seal. And the seventh seal was Jesus Christ. And it was, the re he said, I am the resurrection. So it all ties together. And here they are now. In this upper room, in the presence of God. Then all of a sudden, here comes the Holy Spirit come down from heaven. And it quickened them. And that quickening took place. And they wasn't afraid to make a witness of the message that they had believed and known to be the truth. Otherwise, they were afraid of it. Look here, when it comes on, you're not afraid to witness the revelation of Jesus Christ that He has given you. You want to tell it to somebody because that's what you're here for. But here they were now in this upper room in the presence of God. Then all of a sudden, here comes the Holy Spirit down from heaven and it quickened them and it, the quickening took place and they wasn't afraid to make a witness of the message. Boy, what the Holy Ghost can do to a believer. Look here. They wouldn't, when that thing come, they bust open the doors and they come out in the street staggering under the power of God and they said, what is wrong with these people? Yeah, that's what they say today. What is wrong with these people? The same thing that happened to them has happened to us. We have been quickened. But no, no, no. He said, now, how many Presbyterians, how many Methodists, how many Baptists in the world today, and how many Pentecostals knows the truth and are afraid to make a stand on it? I'm persuaded to wonder, what was that that fell on you? Are you part of his resurrection? Would you dare scream off to some man-made theory that I dare? Or have you got the real boldness and the real manhood it takes? to stand out and call right, right, and wrong, wrong. Are you a part of his resurrection? 
Or are you a worshiper or a bunch of creeds, relics? Are you a goer to church and do you have your name on there and dead in sin and trespasses? He that believes not the full word of God is a sinner. And look at here. If you're a sinner, you need a Savior. And Jesus Christ is the Savior. But you have to be quickened. You have to be resurrected. Easter seal. Listen. His Messiah anointed ones believe that. What is the Messiah? What is the Messiah? Messiah is anointed one. And now, if he was a Messiah by being the anointed one for that day to fulfill the word of God, to be the redeemer and the anointed one, and God raised up that body, his bride is the anointed one for this day. It's already raised with him in the resurrection because the two are one. Amen. And they both have the same name, Jesus Christ. Because we are in him. His name is our name. The resurrection. We are now in the resurrection. We are sitting with him in the resurrection. But only those who have life. He's not the God of the dead. Not, not of those who do not have life. They won't know it. They'll never know it. They'll go right on thinking they're getting the Holy Ghost, being saved, and the rapture will be done, be over and gone, and said, Elias already come, and they, they did that way, and you knew it not, see? And I'm telling you, uh, I could say a lot more, but I think I've said enough. We know who the resurrection is. The resurrection is Jesus Christ. And it is His resurrection. He has raised His body. He has come down and put the capstone, the headstone, the head to it. And it's complete. And it is the body of Jesus Christ. And the name of that body is Jesus Christ. And He even said, She is Him. This day, the body has a feminine designation because she is Him. The two are no longer separated. They are one. It is Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I thank God for the truth. I thank God I ain't got to depend on some relic that come out of some, some Notre Dame or somewhere else, some, some other old church or some thing. We've got the truth. We've got the real, genuine, fresh food. Spiritual food in due season. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you today. Lord, we thank you for the true resurrection of Jesus Christ. Not what some church has told us. Not what some religious group has brought. Not what they're doing somewhere else. What you have been doing down through the church ages. And your body is complete. And it has your name. And it has your nature. It has your, your characteristics. It has your power. It has everything. And everything has been totally restored to the body of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we're so glad and so happy. To, and it's so wonderful to represent that body here on the earth. And Lord, just as they rejected you, they rejected this body again. It's the body of the word for this day. But Lord, just as you overcome then, so will you do it again. We are the overcomers for this age and we enjoy it, and we thank you that you placed us here to be a witness for what you have done, and we give you praise and honor and glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Lord.